Long known, but still amazing, is that a moving bicycle can balance itself. As can be seen in this video, Jour de Fête by Jacques Tati from 1949. Now, most people think that this is a trick, but it isn't. Bicycles can do that. The current bicycle design, the bicycle as we know it today, is already more than 100 years old. And what started in around 1820 by a hobby horse designed by Carl von Dries, matured finally around 1890 in what we call the safety bicycle, being a bicycle with equal-sized wheels, a chain drive and pneumatic tires. Around that time, in 1896, Cambridge undergraduate Francis Whipple used rigid body dynamics equations to show in theory what was already known in practice, that a safety bicycle moving at the right forward speed can show this self-stability. Unfortunately, he didn't tell why. Now, to understand the essence of balance, we first look at a simpler problem. So we're going to look at how do we balance a stick on our open hand. We balance a stick on our open hand by moving the support in the direction of the fall. So if the stick falls to the right, we move our hand to the right, and if the stick moves to the left, we move our hand to the left. And that's how we balance a stick. Now, a bicycle is actually balanced in the same way, although we're not able to move the contact points. However, we can use the steering assembly, but in a stationary bicycle, that isn't doing much. In a moving bicycle, when we steer it, it moves the contact points sidewards. So if we steer to the left in a moving bicycle, the contact points go to the left. And if we steer a moving bicycle to the right, the contact points go to the right. So in order to balance the bicycle, we have to steer into the direction of the undesired fall. If we fall to the right, we steer to the right, and the bike pop up, pops up again. And if we fall to the left, we steer to the left, and the bike comes back up again. This can be seen in a video when we take a bicycle and we bring it up to speed. We perturb it sideways, and you see it oscillating. But if you look very close, you see that first the leaning starts, after which the steering. So the mechanism of steer into the fall is the mechanism which balances this bicycle. Now, most people... One thing is, of course, the big question here is, of course, how does a bicycle do that? It looks like some auto-magic control. Well, most people think that bicycles balance because of something called the gyroscopic effect. And here I have a gyro, a gyro being a fast spinning wheel. And indeed, a fast spinning gyro has the tendency to remain its orientation in space. It's sort of rigid in space. However, this rigidness is not what keeps the bicycle upright. Because if you take a bicycle and you tie the handlebars to the rear frame, then a stationary bicycle will fall over just as quickly as a moving bicycle. So the gyroscopic effect is here not stabilizing the bike. However, another quirky three-dimensional thing is happening in a, in a gyro. If a gyro is spinning about the spinning axis, and it's tilted about a second axis, it will start turning about a third axis. So that's a real three-dimensional thing. And in this case, the gyro is in fact the front wheel of the bicycle in disguise. So first we bring the gyro up to speed, and imagine that this is the front wheel of the bicycle. It's turning in this direction. Now I'm going to lean the bicycle to the left, and you will see that the gyro automatically steers to the left. 
and I will lean the bicycle to the right, and you will see that the gyro stays to the right. And this is also what Felix Klein, famous for the Klein bottle, Arnold Sommerfeld, nominated 81 times for the Nobel Prize, and Fritz Noether, the brother of Emmy Noether, thought. In their four-volume book on gyroscopes from 1910, they dedicated the whole volume to the self-stability of the bicycle, in which they proved, by a mathematical proof on the Whipple bicycle model, the necessity of this gyroscopic effect for self-stability. However, if you follow their derivation in detail, you will find two sign errors. And when you correct the sign errors, it's not so obvious anymore that you need the gyroscopic effect for self-stability. Other parameters then tend to be also important. Another widespread claim about self-stability is because of trail or a caster. Now, as an example, I have a caster here, which is common in grocery carts or under chairs. Uh, even the cameraman has one under his uh, thing. Now, what is a caster? A caster has a steering axis and it has a wheel. When the caster is moving that way, the contact point is behind the steering axis and the wheel will always follow the steering axis. So wherever you go, the wheel will follow you. It's like a dog on a leash. And indeed, if we look at the bicycle, then the front wheel assembly of the bicycle is a caster in disguise. Only in this case, there's a little more subtle geometry going on. Because in the bicycle, we have a tilted steering axis. But if we look closely at this geometry, we see that although at first it looks as if the by, the, by the bended fork, it looks as if the wheel is in front of the steering axis. If you elongate the steering axis to the ground, you will see that the contact point is behind the steering axis. <laughs> 